Alright, so we found another video on the truth about the white slave trade. Ah, get in here, shit. How did that last video make y'all feel? It was, it was... It was very interesting. Well, it was sound like people for a handy A lot of it was, uh, for the, what's it exaggerated, called? Exaggerated, I believe, but it was, it was interesting. I forgot exactly what was on the video. Remember, they were selling people for a handy bottle. Okay, she yeah, okay. They sold people for things as trivial as gin and things. I mean, I don't feel like it was uh, exaggerated, though. I definitely though. did that. Yeah, I don't think it was exaggerated either. It wasn't like it was super crazy. Like it was exaggerated a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, we got a little, um, what should we call him? The guy on TikTok. What should we call him? A hater. Not a hater. Um, a the puny man. word. What is the way you would call someone? A, a peon. Slavery was not invented by white people. You know it did not. My purpose here is to simply tell the truth. Oh, are you now? My bad. I'll get to thanking y'all and apologizing in a little bit. If I'm making a video about it, you know what time it is. And seeing as the six distinct people I'm responding to right now combined for a total of zero hours of research, I'm about to ether all y'all shit at the same time. Slavery was not invented by white people. And we already got a fucking miss. Candace spends a minute 39 seconds talking about this very point and later on in the video goes on to say, No one, regardless of skin color, stands guiltless. Yet today we are never told to consider the murderous Persian empire or the cannibalism of indigenous tribes. We're told that slavery is a white phenomenon. But considering it's a given that everyone I'm talking to probably doesn't know how history or language works, let me explain something to you real quick. When talking about slavery in the context of American politics, which is the main fucking thing PragerU deals with, no one has made the claim that slavery never existed before the tyrannical white people started it in America. But they act as though that's the claim so that conservatives have something easier to attack while tacitly justifying slavery. Because if we lived in the same house and you stole $500 from me and I said hey you stole $500 from me that's a big reason why you now have more money than I do and then you said hmm theft existed back in the biblical times theft existed before Christopher Columbus and you were never told but you didn't say any of that theft you don't have a problem with that theft. any reasonable person would look at you like a moron because the conversation about what happened in the Ottoman Empire does not pertain to the black white relations in the United States. When the intrepid explorer landed in the Bahamas, the native Taino tribe hoped that he would help them defeat their aggressive neighbors, the Caribs. The Caribs enslaved the Taino and on occasion served them for dinner. Whoa. Assuming there was any fucking research done, you couldn't have missed this. But then again, there fucking wasn't. But in true PragerU fashion, while we tacitly justify slavery, let's also tacitly justify genocide. Keep that word in your mind, by the way. People are trying to say that the last video on PragerU was false, guys. And we're being pushed a right propaganda and we're pushing propaganda. That's we're crazy. Just videos. Yeah, we just watch videos. Like, I mean, you know, I we did, okay, uh, it might not be true or not, but we gonna tell you we shocked or we not by all the information that the video give. Yeah, man. But we ain't gonna do no explanation. Let's just go and get to this video, the truth about the white slave trade. Go watch the other video. Let's see how interesting this one is. Slavery is as old as human civilization, dating back beyond recorded history, and it exists even still today. Every culture on every continent practiced some form of slavery, whether it was serfdom, indentured servitude, or collective peasantry. However, when the slave trade is mentioned, people normally think of the black African slave trade to the Western Hemisphere during the colonial period from 1500 to the mid 1800s as practiced by the European colonial powers. Estimates range from 10 to 13 million Africans being brought to the New World with around 10 million surviving to be sold in North and South America as well as in the Caribbean islands. Of this number, the best estimate is that 450,000 went to the British, French, and Spanish colonies in what is now the United States and Caribbean. Yeah, Brazil yeah, alone yeah. received almost 5 million, the rest going to the Spanish colonies in South America. Slavery still exists in the world, yet most of the major powers ignore the fact and refuse to even acknowledge that it still exists. It is still quite oh, active. Is it 500k yeah, in America? Talking about, right there, like, talking about yeah. sex slaves, probably. No. And, uh, no, I don't think that was. Oh, 2018. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You don't think it's the prison system? I think it's the prison system. That counts as slavery? Yeah, because yeah, they, they make them work. Yeah, you know, Texas, That's you go to jail. Though, I feel like. Well, technically, well, it says it on the. But your ass is there because you did something. Yeah, but <laughs> you didn't, slavery. You you had no choice. You're supposed to be in jail though, not you, supposed to be working. You working yeah, for the state? You yeah, they sit there and breathe the air, man. Like yeah. I heard in Texas, they kind of almost got them picking guys or uh, picking some out here. So I he's heard. some. If I'm not mistaken, he said a lot of slaves went to North America, a lot of slaves went to South America, and some went to the Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. went the Caribbean's full of black people. Yes. Yeah. South America. There. No, South America. 
South America's full of. They got black people there too. South America is like Brazil and all that. Yeah. yeah. They, got black, they got a lot of black people there. You'd be surprised. They just said. Actually, yeah. no, no. Actually, no. Because when I was in a bar, it's a South America. No, no, we forget about them a lot. Like, damn, they're right below them. us? Like, what the heck? What's down there? Brazil? You got, I mean, uh, uh, Chile, Latin America, yeah. Argentina. Slavery still exists in the world, yet most of the major powers ignore the fact and refuse to even acknowledge that it still exists. It is still quite active. Yet, six decades before the American Civil War, a war was fought by the United States on foreign shores to try and stop the white slave trade. What was the white slave trade? Does it still exist? Who were the Barbary pirates? What was the result of American intervention? How did it occur? And what was the aftermath? And how did nine U.S. Marines and their mercenaries make history and give birth to a legendary fighting force while also ending the white slave trade in North Africa. Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. That man look like an alien. And we will answer these questions and other issues this is on this segment of Forgotten History. Sniper. During the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the world was on fire as France and Britain were engaged in the Napoleonic Wars, which was another series of conflicts just like the Seven Years' War, again involving every nation. In Never Europe. heard of neither of them. The Seven Years' War the seven years. was also known as the French and Indian War in oh, the United okay, States. Okay. Both these conflicts were fought on every continent and on every ocean and in every colony. Even during these protracted wars, the transatlantic slave trade continued. It was big business. While the European powers were destroying each other, Thomas Jefferson became the third president of the United States from March 4th, 1801 to March 4th, 1809. And he had several major issues to contend with. The Louisiana Purchase of 1803 from France doubled the size of the United States. The Yazoo territorial disputes in western Georgia were highly contested. No, go back. States. What? They just bought Louisiana. I know, but like, it don't have Lafayette under it. And that's not supposed to be like one part of the French border. Look at it. Like, hold up. Watch the play. For the words in the way. Yeah. The Yazoo territorial oh, disputes in western Georgia were hotly contested by the United States. It don't get, it don't get it's laughing. Yeah, laughing yeah, under it. It's, 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 it's under the It's undiscovered land at the time. That's crazy. We belong to Texas or the Spanish. But we got Texas from Mexico. Yeah, but then the Spanish owned Mexico. That was the Spanish War too. I thought that was the Spanish War. Thing no, I was the Texas Mexican War. So Spain didn't own Mexico. They own California. I thought Spain uh, owned Florida. Where was that? I don't know who they own, but I know they was owning. Oh, that's that's why California has all those Spanish names like Los Angeles and all that. Didn't we buy California from Spain? We can look that yeah. up. Man, I thought that I was thought, fought during the yeah. Spain War. California, Oregon, Nevada, oh. Idaho, Colorado, New Mexico, Kansas, Montana, Florida, Alabama. Since we got California from the Texas and uh, Mexican War. So Perfect. California was owned by Mexico. That makes sense they had Mexico and Texas. Cause they didn't have oh, that was one of my favorite Texas. stories, man. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, they said they Spain it says, had California. It said Mexico oh. had California, Nevada, Utah, New Mexico, most of Arizona, Colorado, parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Wyoming. Yep, that was one of my favorite stories. But yeah, that Texas home. Mexico War. And you know who saved us? It says on here. The it's good Colorado. old boy, what? David Crock. Mexican. Mexican. It, says right here, it says on here that it was, it was the Mexican-American War, not the Mexican. Texas-Mexican um, uh, yeah, War. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. I thought it was the Spain War. That's what I thought it was called, the Spanish War. I thought it was a, a Mexican-American Mexican uh, War, not Spanish. Uh, I thought it was definitely a Texas and Mexican War, though. But maybe they just fought in Texas because, you know, they I don't know. Fought in Texas. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. But maybe it was... Remember the Alamo? Maybe it was Patriots. No, I think it was the Patriots definitely fighting, but it wasn't probably just Texas Patriots. It was definitely probably all Patriots. Or each other, Thomas Jefferson became the third president of the United States from March 4th, 1801 to March 4th, 1809. And he had several major issues to contend with. The Louisiana Purchase of 1803 from France doubled the size of the United States. The Yazoo territorial disputes in Western Georgia were hotly contested. The launching of the Lewis and Clark Expedition in 1804 to explore the newly acquired country and the contested issue of slavery. In 1806, Jefferson denounced the international slave trade as a violation of human rights and called upon Congress to criminalize it. Congress responded by approving the act prohibiting importation of slaves the following year. No longer could slaves be brought from Africa, although slavery was still legal in the Wait, United States. Wait, is it Thomas? 
Then there were also the rising tensions between the United States and Great Britain, which dominated the final years of Jefferson's second term, as the Royal Navy had been seizing American merchant ships and impressing sailors. However, one situation which has gone largely unnoticed in history was Jefferson being the first president to send the military overseas into direct action, the war against the Barbary pirates. For decades prior to Jefferson's accession to office, the Barbary Coast pirates of North Africa had been capturing foreign merchant and warships, stealing their valuable cargoes and enslaving crew members, while often demanding huge ransoms for their release. Many of these ships and crews were American. Before independence, American merchant ships were protected from the Barbary pirates by the naval and diplomatic influence of Great Britain, which had threatened the use of military force should their ships be molested. However, that American protection came to an end after the colonies won their independence. The Barbary pirates also attacked the coastal northern Mediterranean, launching attacks against France, Italy, and Sicily, kidnapping women as white slaves, primarily and whenever possible, notable wealthy persons and ships for ransom. In their feverish search for white women slaves, a few pirates even went as far as the coast of Iceland, Iceland, raiding inland to kidnap women and bring them back to North Africa. North African slave markets thrived, as, under Islamic law, known as Sharia, although fellow Muslims could not be enslaved, non-Muslims could be and were. Over a period of more than 300 years, it is estimated that one million white Europeans, to include those captured at sea, as well as through land raids abroad, were enslaved. Many of these were Americans captured at sea. In 1794, in reaction to the attacks, Congress had passed a law authorizing the payment of tribute to the Barbary states. Part of that law was the Naval Act of 1794, which authorized the construction of six frigates establishing the United States Navy. By the end of the 1700s, when Jefferson was Secretary of State, the United States had concluded treaties with all of the Barbary states, the Ottoman regencies of Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli, along with independent Morocco. When Congress authorized $80,000 for Morocco to not molest American shipping, it was considered a good deal as it was a cost savings when compared to the loss of ships, cargo, and sailors. The Bay of Algiers, Mustafa Baba, also agreed, and many American merchantmen were escorted by Portuguese warships, so as Portugal also had a treaty with the Islamic State. So you pretty much telling me America sent motherfuckers from all the way from over here, over there, to dead people for getting robbed? No, they made a deal with those countries so that they wouldn't rob them no more. So that's how y'all signed this treaty. Y'all stopped robbing them ships but, and enslaving them people. So, but then they still send the Navy ships out there though? They had to send people out there. That's what I'm saying, so they had to send people out over there. To defend it once they signed the treaty, probably, yeah. So they wouldn't just go off the world. Oh, you ain't gonna do it no more. Nah, yeah. Somebody nah. had to go out there. It's, it's the Navy, you know, it's going to go on the ocean. Now this is some real barbaric warrior stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna come catch your ship? So this oh, imagine if you on the ship and you see them coming. I'll be so scared, boy. Oh my gosh, man. You get hit by a cannon. Boom! You survived your slave. Literally. Literally. Also agreed. And many American merchantmen were escorted by Portuguese warships, as Portugal also yes. had a treaty with the Islamic States. But Jefferson was opposed to paying tribute, which he How considered to be a modern Dane Geld. When Saxon well, Berlin paid the Danish Vikings, no, no, they speak English, they speak Portuguese. Oh, yeah, that's why. So how, how do they, how do they I communicate? Don't know. I gotta find somebody who bilingual. Or oh, they probably got somebody on the boat that already know how they do My multiple God. languages, probably. Somebody that, hey, that person was paid. I, I wanna know how they was learning multiple languages back in the day. Reading, probably. Not. That is a great question. Well, all languages came from one, kind of. It's like, it's kind of structured off of each other. I think I don't that's know. like, I think that's the alphabet. I don't, I don't think, know. like, language was from that, is it? Some of sure that's yeah. alphabet words. It's like some of our words in English is from French roots. So, so a lot of our words are from French, English. Yeah, yeah, you know, they'll, they'll teach. So like they'll have the schools where we're going to teach all this language and that language at school. I don't know. I think the curriculum was that advanced in 1809. I mean, that's probably doing If you're from Great Britain, they do it now. But uh, they was doing that as medicine, over the counter. Go yeah, some they wasn't that bad. Yeah, I feel you like go get a Coca-Cola when they start selling, they had Coke in it. Well, you can go get a Z right now from the doctor if you get a script. I don't think that. I don't think that's that was cool that dumb, bro. But it's a, you, you go crazy with them things. I don't know. That's <laughs> abusing it. But I do think they probably had schools where they were teaching multiple languages mm -hmm. for stuff like this. Imagine me, bro. But Jefferson was a parent to paying tribute, which he considered to be a modern Dane Geld. When Saxon England paid the Danish Vikings not to attack, it did not work. Although Morocco and Algiers initially agreed, just weeks before Jefferson took office, Tripoli began a 
attacking American merchant ships in an attempt to extract further tribute, Jefferson had seen enough. Jefferson tried diplomacy like in his letter to hey, Pasha Yusuf Karmani. You know what I think? I just thought about this. You know how smart you had to be to drive a wind ship across the ocean yeah, that's to hard. go to a spot that you know is the right spot every single time. That's hard. You're on the open ocean. It took With months. no GPT. It took months to get yeah, there. Uh, yeah, for sure. What's the Compass. Thing Compass? Yeah, yeah, but that's just telling that you. That is telling you. Yeah, like, how, how do you get in North? But how do you know you gotta get to that exact point? That is very true. That's why I think true. about this. Like, right there, there, my there ain't no landmarks going down. <laughs> that way it'd be there. <laughs> we just leave here and go this way. Too. Yeah, head on down, come on. And eventually going right. I don't know. That is, that is crazy. Like, you gotta really be intelligent. I can't even and then, and then think about, like, well, we made it in Morocco. How the hell do you know that it's Morocco? <laughs> I just named it that shit. I don't know. No, no, no. He said, you went there once, right? And you're okay, I'm going to go back to America. Now I'm trying to go back to Morocco. And you just pull up on some land. How would you know that that land is Morocco? Till you get there, you wouldn't know. Till you land. Yeah, I mean, you would definitely know, though. You would definitely mm -hmm. be able to tell. How? Yeah, how? You probably leave something to tell. But you on the ocean. You so far, it's going to be hard to see that shit. You got to get up. Don't let it. <laughs> uh, 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 I don't know, yo, what we're gonna try about 10 miles to see this they, is. they don't explain how long yeah. it took to get there either. They're time. making it seem like, oh, we got there in a week. It was taking them months to get there. Like, think about, like, you have to really be intelligent back in the day. Like, think about moving around and coming back where you was at without a map. No, no, no. Their lives are definitely different. Some people's getting lost. So you can't, you can't say they do. No, no. Never said that. No, no. They the ones that built to what this is today. American they merchants were smart. agreed. Oh, Just weeks right. before Jefferson took office, oh, Tripoli no. began attacking American merchant ships in an attempt to extract further tribute. Jefferson had seen enough. Jefferson tried diplomacy. Oh, like and his letter to Pasha Yusuf Karamanli emphasized our sincere desire to cultivate peace and commerce with your subjects. Pasha Karamanli, the ruler of modern day Tunisia, felt that the Americans had insulted him by not offering to pay tribute. He threatened continued actions, if not so, respected. Pasha Karamanli was already at war with Sweden, having broken an existing treaty. After Sweden agreed to pay annual tribute and ransom for 131 captives, 14 Swedish merchantmen had been seized by Tripolitan Corsairs. Some of these were white women who were being transported on Swedish merchantmen, and it is not known if they were ever recovered, as the white women were rarely ransomed. They were highly prized and sold. The Pasha then declared war on the United States on May 14, 1801 by chopping down the flagpole at the American consulate in Tripoli, a direct act of war. Jefferson sent three know. frigates and a schooner under the command of U.S. Navy Commodore Richard yeah, Dale Navy. as a show of force yeah, yeah, and to protect U.S. ships entering the Mediterranean through the Straits of Gibraltar. Dale learned of the declaration when he reached Gibraltar on July 1, 1801. From that point, Dale's ships blocked two of the Pasha's Corsairs operating as raiders and messengers inside the harbor. Yusuf Karimanli was shocked at the American audacity. The Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, Selim III in Istanbul, was also less than amused, yet did not interfere when the Americans became involved. He had just concluded treaties with Russia and Austria, and was trying to westernize his empire along western lines. This included eliminating the white slave trade. And this position was not favored by many of his subordinate regional leaders, especially in North Africa, and they launched a revolt against him and his cousin and successor, Mustafa IV, had him murdered in 1807. He was not about to give up such a lucrative business. The U.S. blockades halted Barbary trade and raids with Europe, but did not stop Tripoli's trade with the other Barbary states. It did, however, incite the other rulers, who considered siding with the Pasha, and they expelled their American diplomats. The United States was putting a major dent into their pirate enterprises, to include the white slave trade. The possibility of Tunis, Algiers, and Morocco joining forces as a result of losing this lucrative business became a serious concern during 1802. But in 1803, Captain Edward Preble was the new American naval commander, and he was aware of the white slave trade and piracy, and he began to deal with it. On September 12, 1803, the USS Constitution arrived off the Barbary Coast to confront the Tripolitan Pirates. In October 1803, the frigate USS Philadelphia ran aground and was attacked and seized, and 307 man crew was held for ransom. In October 1803, the frigate USS Philadelphia ran aground and was attacked and seized, and 307 man crew was held for ransom. 
In response, on February 16, 1804, a group under Navy Lieutenant Stephen Decatur slipped into Tripoli Harbor after dark, boarded and set fires that destroyed the Philadelphia. The Pasha, in response, demanded an outrageous sum and ransom for his American hostages, even threatening death if it was not paid. In 1804, Commodore Samuel Barron, aboard the USS President, took command of 11 vessels, and he had new orders. But due to illness, he handed command of the squadron to Captain John Rogers. Jefferson had again seen enough and decided to take direct and immediate action. He sent the order. Ex-Consul William Eaton, a former Army captain who used the title of General, and United States Marine Corps First Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon would lead a force of eight U.S. Marines and 500 mercenaries to take Derna and free any hostages. These mercenaries were Greeks from Crete, Arabs and Berbers, opposed to the regime, and started on a march across the desert from Alexandria, Egypt in April 1805. Their objective was to capture the Tripolitan city of Derna. The Muslim troops were under the command of Egyptian Sheikh El Tahib, the Ottoman Empire Viceroy. William Eaton, who was overbearing and not very friendly, kept himself aloof from his men and was in overall command but leading only half the group. He had a tough job controlling the largely undisciplined mercenaries and the infighting between the Christian Greeks and Muslims, few of whom were professional soldiers, became a problem. His promises of money and loot once they took Derna was looked upon skeptically. However, O'Bannon and his eight Marines embedded all with their mercenaries, shared food, hardship, water, and earned their trust. O'Bannon decided to take the Muslims from Eaton, exchanging them for his Greeks. The Marines built a strong fellowship by not denigrating the Islamic faith. They discussed their similarities and differences. O'Bannon also knew that many of these men had either been hostages themselves or had lost friends and family to the white slave trade. Eaton reported in May 1805, quote, our only provisions are a handful of rice and two biscuits a day. End quote. From March 22nd to March 30th, several Arab mercenaries under the command of Sheikh Hamid El Tahib staged mutinies. By April 8th, when he crossed the border into Libya and Tripoli, Eaton had quelled the Arab mutinies, but he could not stop the desertions. In late April, his army finally reached the port city of Bomba, some miles up the coast from Derna, where U.S. Navy warships USS Argus, Nautilus and Hornet, with Commodore James Barron and Captain Isaac Hull, were waiting for him. Eaton received fresh supplies and the money to pay his mercenaries. Argus well, gave an additional. I bet that ship stunk. No hell jobs. yeah. No job. Oh my god. <laughs> you probably got to get all the like one out of the water. Everybody take a bath in it. Same oh, bucket. Oh, but that sucked. Oh, that sucked. I've been trying to go that first. So bad. Oh my gosh. So you think it just go over the it, side? Yep. Yeah. There was a smart. I was ready to ask him, man. Oh my gosh. We are here, man. Everybody's like, y'all scared of that tank, boy. I have to write some biscuits. <laughs> that is crazy. No, yeah, this time was, was different. Oh, this is treacherous. Oh man, man we're living well, there was some real fabulous. Fun. No wonder we're living in Wally World. <laughs> people said we're in a state of emergency. No wonder they was robbing and killing each other. Let's see what crazy. you got. No, this is they crazy. was cannibalizing each other. Mm -hmm. This is barbaric. Probably only in certain parts of the world. I bet they was eating each other. Well, they really used to be. Can you with me? No, that's my shit. Facts. Yeah, you had to be a real killer warrior back then. Yeah, you gotta be ready to kill somebody at any moment. I like your shirt. Give it to me. No. If not, cut his head off. I'm gonna take it off you. Why are you ruining it? Mm -hmm. love it? Ah, that's all I like it like that. These are the true. Not a sword spot crazy. These are the true fire minos. You know, that really got me up. You know what I mean? They probably was. Yeah, you wrecked me. I'll be back. <laughs> Some miles oh, up the coast from Derna were U.S. Navy warships, USS Argus, Nautilus, and Hornet, with Commodore James Barron and Captain Isaac Hull were waiting for him. Eaton received fresh supplies and the money to pay his mercenaries. Argus gave an additional cannon to the troops. On April 26, Captain Hull's ships then opened fire and bombarded Derna's batteries for an hour. Meanwhile, Eaton divided his remaining army into two separate attacking parties. The attack began at 14.45 hours, with Lieutenant O'Bannon and his Marines <laughs> leading the attack of 50 inexperienced How gunners. Eaton's force was halted due to high volumes uh, of enemy musket fire. But O'Bannon pushed his men through as witnesses from muskets. 
carefully interchanging his men into various Science hours. Oh, God. To continue the process, O'Bannon's force took the Fort Cannons. Each and wounded in the left wrist were reported later that the O'Bannon and the Marines had, quote, passed through a shower of musketry from the walls of houses, took possession of the battery, end quote. Eaton's forces caught up and turned the defenders' own abandoned guns against them, pushing them out of the city and into a well-placed ambush set up by O'Bannon just outside the main gate. During the entire battle, O'Bannon lost two men killed and three wounded Marines, with Marines. nine of his mercenaries killed. Eaton's losses among the Muslims is unknown. O'Bannon raised the flag over the captured city at 1,600 hours. They had just defeated a force four times their number, who were in a fortified defensive posture. And for the first time in American history, that a flag of the United States had been raised on foreign soil. Hostages yeah, were freed. So, yeah, pocket watch. Navy sank the pirate ship. Neil Lerner, Jack Sparrow. Accurate naval. Oh, hunters. this was all to fake. Bro, they freed people. Yeah, this is yeah. this is all Hostages yeah. were freed. You know, and the Navy yeah, yeah, sank the pirate ship. It's I forgot. Accurate about. naval fire from Argus and the other ships forced them back, and Derna remained in American hands. Yusuf reluctantly signed so, a peace treaty on June 10th, 1805, well, aboard the USS Constitution. The treaty granted American ships passage through the Mediterranean without further payments of tribute and freedom from harassment. This also meant joining the other European nations and halting the very active and overt white slavery. The war was over, and so was active white slavery from North Africa. Marine Corps legend has it that the European nations and halting the very active and overt white slave trade. The war was over, and so was active white slavery from North Africa. Marine Corps legend has it that Hamet presented O'Bannon with a Mameluk sword, a sign of prestige and power. Emboldened by this event, more European nations also increased their naval presence and resisted the Barbary pirates, stopped paying tribute, crippling their commercial trade and extortion rackets, ending their raids on southern coastal Europe, ending hostage taking and their demand for ransoms and the white slave trade. Presley O'Bannon and his eight Marines had done the seemingly impossible but it would not be the last time Marines were called upon to do the impossible and succeed. Simplify. We hope you enjoyed this segment this of Forgotten History. Please power. click like and subscribe for free. Mm -hmm. And please stay well, tuned and be engaged and informed. My, my, my crazy question is, just why I kept saying, hold oh, no, on, is how in the hell we gonna go to another country and dead slavery and we had slavery in their own country? On their own country? Because our people, were, well, American people was the ones enslaved, they were saying. So but, they're saying, yeah. but they had slavery in their own country already. Bro, they, they didn't care. They said, what what you were African. You were sold. Bro, they said yeah. Jefferson. So that's the third president. It didn't yeah. end to, to, yeah. it didn't end to, yeah. what's his name? Like, like, yeah, they, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln was in office. You act like they view black and white people the same. I know, but I'm just saying, that's crazy. They ain't view black and white people the same. It's, it says, yeah, that's facts. That's they, what I'm they saying. They said they're white slaves. Yeah, they gonna free white people in chains? Hell no. We gotta go save them from these damn. I don't give a damn how far we gotta go. Hold on, though. So they were in the 1860. Ah. Damn. Wow. I ain't like, really yeah. think we sit there and eat, but they be over it. That's not even it. They didn't do it because I was about to say 1864. They didn't want they to 1865. But I thought no, I thought they uh freed even this was not 18, even just their people. Not just the white, it was white slaves they freed. Yeah, so this was eighteen oh five they freed the white slaves. We getting freed for another sixty years. So we gonna start somebody else for having slaves and we got slavery. Can right? you whoop us? I did. I'm sure I'm that's that's it. <laughs> sure we don't want. We don't want nothing. We, 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 we want. Maybe yeah, I'm tripping. Africa. Africa. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. That's where they went, or was that? They that's said, what they explained. They keep saying Islamic, so like. Yeah, that's where it must be a lot of. Yeah. There. They say if you wasn't Muslim, you was enslaved. Makes sense. Oh no, yeah, so it probably was black people. Makes sense. In 18. A lot of black people are Muslim over there. Well, they did have black. That was North Africa. Did they have black slaves in, in the uh, Thirteen Colonies? You said this what? The United States of America. He's talking about, yeah, no, yeah I don't think they did because... We, we had states. Well, no, 13 colonies in 1600, I'm sure. Yeah. This was in 1800, so this was... The yeah, 13 States. colonies, they did have slaves, bro. I don't think they Because they had tobacco and stuff. That was their main... That was but their Thomas main Jefferson was... But they bought the slaves from Great Britain to America? But Thomas Jefferson was up north, though. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm saying. So, like, maybe... No, they have slaves there, bro. They, they probably did, too. I don't they first got there, though. They probably got there. How are you? But how'd they get them? They had somebody else, they had another business, bring them boys on over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's Thomas, all business. You see all this is about business? No, bro. I but think they was Thomas was trying to, to Africans, though. Look at yeah. that. Let me, what, what my fault? I think Thomas was trying to stop all 
Slavery, bro. No, he wasn't. Yes, it says the economies, all 13 British colonies depended on slavery. That is crazy. Makes sense. But they had white people, it's white indentured servants. Yeah, they had indentured servants too, so yeah. It was, it was a mixture of Damn. everything. So we we hey, this is this we call this the history channel. <laughs> This is no, they, they taught us that in school, though. Okay, yeah, Jefferson constantly servants. spoke out against the international slave trade and outlawed it while he was president. International. International, yes. It says so, that it's, he advocated at the time, though. Gradual. By that clock. Bro, it said they didn't have wristwatches until 1904. Guess who invented it? Well, he advocated for a gradual Benjamin Franklin emancipation oh, yeah. of all slaves within the United First States. First wristwatch. That's crazy. That's probably like, they probably had still a clock. Yeah, yeah, they had a pocket watch or something. They had to. Look, he advocated for a gradual emancipation of all slaves within the yeah, United States. Yeah, so Jefferson States. was against, so you know, the president can't have the final say. So he was against slavery as being the president. Listen, Ball, these ain't white people in China. Everybody else freedom, didn't go for that. Colonization of Africa by free to African American slaves. What? Oh, so he was saying he said let's free all the black slaves and send their ass back to Africa. That's Tom oh, okay. Jefferson. That's what Thomas Jefferson was trying to do. Believe in this, sir. Yeah, so I, I, I But it didn't work. So yeah, everybody had all type of ideologies when it felt like it was right and it was wrong. Yes, yeah, I learned that in history class. We talked about this. That's how I knew Thomas Jefferson was a Christian and he didn't want slavery at all. Okay. So, it was a few yeah. other guys though. Some other judges. Yeah, definitely some other guys. Yeah. I don't know why they couldn't. But I mean, if every state was doing it, that's kind of hard. Like, so everybody else doing it. Y'all want me to eat. That's how everybody looks at yeah, it. Yeah, it so it's like, yeah, I can see why that was that took some time to do. If but, everybody was doing it. But but they just went to a whole other country and just dated them. Yeah, bro. Okay, so that's like white. Yeah, but that's like my they people being slaves. Oh, white people. Yeah, that's yeah, like, yeah, I don't know why. Why, why is that so hard for you to understand? No, I don't. Another country might not know go get their homies. You know what I'm yeah. So that's kind of patriot. Okay, well they a lot of people are enslaving people. You can't really stop that. So you know, but at least you go and get the people you love. So that's kind of I ain't gonna say that's you know. <laughs> they do what they want. If you can't book me, I'm doing what I want. If I want to do slavery here, but I don't want you to do over there, can you put my ass? I did. That's what's gonna happen. That's what Becca said. Okay, guys. Well, let's know what y'all think about that's the truth insane. about white slavery. I think about it the white slavery. I wonder if that's a real name to go for something. The he never this. I never actually heard about that. I never heard about it. The white slave trade. We just learned about it. I know, but like I said, I never learned about it before. Yeah, yeah, that's the name. I never heard of this before. This is so crazy. What would you call it? What else would you call it? The slave trade? I don't know. Why would you call it the white slave trade? Because you you're making a distinction. Oh yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, yeah, when people say slave trade, you talk about the Western slave trade with people coming from Africa to here. That's what he said. Uh, the white slave trade is where they went and got white slaves who wasn't Muslim and, and traded and sold them. Got them yeah. ships, they caught them on them ships. Them the black. main concern was white women. They said that. They yeah, said they, they, they were the highest they, priority. Yeah, it was high prized. Boy, and you know Susie, you know they were going to get Susie. In every clip, the white woman was naked. Yeah. They pulled them white tears out. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know this nigga. Oh, I'm sorry. Alrighty. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody was enslaved. Uh, it's a lot of evil happening in this world, but uh, I feel like it's been getting better. Like, you know, it's not the world is moving, there's still slavery going better. on, but there's still human trafficking stuff like that. But a lot of problems. People are getting slaughtered and. It's like right, they school like. shootings. Yeah. We got cameras to see that. We got a justice system. See, now that we can see cameras, see everything been probably happening when you couldn't see it. It ain't just laying around. Yeah. Well, I didn't do that. <laughs> so, did you see we do that? So, what's the thing? So, is our cool. society is moving forward in a good way? Man. I ain't gonna lie. After watching. Based on the Prager U vid, they said white people was the first ones to stop slavery. Did when to stop white slavery? Yeah, 1805. Can, you know, I can't really be upset with them. Was until 1865, but based on the facts. Yeah. We have so seen. if anybody's mad at white people, Yo. I take it from all these events. If anybody's mad at white people, they need to go through the history. Everybody. Bro, you can't be mad at nobody for what their ancestors did, but I'm not gonna be mad. Yo, yo great, 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 granddaddy yeah, did you that. Can't, you can't. Yeah, you, that's logical. I'll too. judge you what I, what you do to me. Yeah. If you racist, then I don't like you. If you not racist. Then I like you. That's facts. I'm, I'm, I don't care what your daddy or your granddaddy did. I feel like it's too far. I gotta, I gotta look at you. Cause when my daddy, what about? I don't know what they did. They could have been out there murdering, and then boom, somebody come. Hey, your great, 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 great granddaddy 
Give this to me. For all we know, my great could have sold all you niggas' pictures. I feel like it's just everybody has an opinion now. Back then, right. nobody yeah. really had an opinion. I bet, I ain't gonna say the slaves felt bad. I mean, they definitely felt bad. Yeah, yeah. Everybody like shit. understood what was going on. Everybody like, didn't understand. That's like, it's horrible. No, they might not have thought, but I'm just saying, like, everybody at war, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, these people just told me, like, what can I do? Like, you know what I'm saying? But then they born into it, that's all they know. Low key, we can say, would you rather be in slavery in Africa or in America? Neither. Neither. I don't want to be a slave at all. Yeah, I'm just saying, but. I want to be a free man. But. Yeah. Because those people would actually still been slaves in Africa. Because they yes. were already. No, slaves. definitely, definitely. But yeah, they got so Did they go into the better shit? No, they didn't go to the better shit. They didn't, they didn't go to the better shit. I feel like they were. It was definitely still bad. But. We don't know what it was. We like. don't know what We need to look up the history of Africa. Like the, the you want to be a slave for a day so you can say which can get you better than you? I'm going to I'm assuming they didn't treat you very well. No, oh, exactly. either way, you're not getting treated. Yeah, you're not know, getting treated very well. We take your ass to Timberdale and get the pig, get some cotton, and then take your ass. You're on the type of the owner you have, though. No, you know, I, you know, I, don't, I don't think, think so, like, man. You know, I don't think you're a good person. You own another person. But it was social media. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it's probably... This is my proper chair. That's what they do it. Like, it... it it's probably yeah, a few was, owners that was good, but... You probably was thinking with someone that's sitting in that house like, damn, I really don't... You think somebody was pimping as a... I feel bad for this, but yeah, you know, this yeah. is where I eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this, this was like, everybody living. living. My slave, he hurt. They were doing that. And this is how we gotta eat. If I don't, legitimately not gonna eat. If Let's I don't. go buy some poor people. <laughs> you know, legitimately not gonna eat if I don't do that there. Damn. It's, it is just. It's definitely terrible, though. I'm not, yeah. I'm not justifying, but I'm just saying, you know. I don't know what I'm saying. All right, guys. Y'all, let us know what y'all think about this video. Was it true? Was it false? We're out here. Here's on Instagram.